Jaguar Journal. Bright and early on this Saturday morning. He's Reggie Flood. I'm Perry White. Yes, sir. Got a little groove right there. Got a special guest this morning on the Jaguar Journal. From right up the road, if you took 61 North, you know where you're going. Up there towards Lorman, Mississippi. The reservation. We got to welcome to the Jaguar Journal. My guy, Charles Edmond. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning How you guys doing? Doing good. How you doing, man? Good. You, you up? Yeah. Uh, what 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 is a Mississippi breakfast consist of? I know y'all eat good for breakfast in Mississippi. Oh man! Now for me, I love pancakes, bacon, eggs, scrambled eggs, <laughs> and some smoked sausage. That's a perfect breakfast for me. Ooh. That's just round one now. Oh, we, we not even good. you got a couple more rounds to go. Gosh, I need to come up <laughs> to Mississippi, man. Look, I know. <laughs> I gotta ask this, man. This I gotta pop it off with this. I saw you doing an interview with Coach Fred McNair yesterday. What is your official height? You made Coach McNair look like a little, uh, just like a little middle schooler, man. I, I, what is your official <laughs> height? I'm seven feet tall, so about seven feet, close to seven one. Woo! Or somebody, somebody put it to me. You're five foot twenty four. <laughs> 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 yeah, I saw you standing next to Coach McNair. I said, man, Coach McNair, not a little guy, man. It, but it was like Shaq standing next to Kevin Hart. If, if, anybody, <laughs> if anybody seen those pictures, man, seven feet, man, I always used to pray. I was just like, Lord, just let me be 6'4". Just all I wanted to be was 6'4". I could do something with 6'4", but seven foot, man. Yeah, yeah. People ask me, you know, where where I got got get my height from. You know, my father, my late father, was six five, but I was told early on I had two great grandfathers that were seven feet on both sides of the family. So Ooh. I think that's where the height came from. Man, you know, you've been around a while, uh, around all corn, man. Give us an update. What's going on? They've reported for fall camp. How's things looking up down the reservation with Coach Fred being there? Well, there was just day one yesterday, and you know, I posted a bunch of content, and uh, you saw the interviews, and it was a typical, typical day one. You know, the, the players arrived July the fifth, and just trying to round out in a shape, just trying to bounce around from station to station. Um, you know, there's a lot of battles in camp. You know, for the first time in like five years, you don't know who the quarterback's going to be. And you know, it, it was John Gibbs, a four-year starter. Then you had. Uh, Lenoris Footman, you had Noah Johnson, Felix Harper. You kind of knew what was coming up the line. And for the first time, we have uh, question marks in terms of who the quarterback's going to be. It's not someone that was on the roster previously. So right now you've got a quarterback battle going on. But Louisiana Tech uh, transfer Aaron Allen, um, who I think will probably get the start against Stephen F. Um, we got Markavian Quinn and Trey Lawrence as well as Cole Williams. So four-person quarterback battle. We haven't had that around here in a while. So that that's probably the, the biggest question. Um, the second biggest question is we're really deep on the offensive line. We've got 18 O-linemen, and we're just trying to find some mixing and matching there. We're taller, we're bigger, we're wider up front, something I hadn't seen in a while. So those are the two big battles that, that we've got going on in camp through through day one. But, uh, you know, a typical day one, just trying to, you know, get some station to station. Coach McNair, very intense. Because, you know, last year, he, you know, we, we did not have a great year. I mean, it, we won four in a row. That Southern game just set us back, and we never could really recover after that. We lost to Bethune and then Jackson State towards the end of the season. So we're just trying to get back to where to where we are, to where we were, you know, winning division titles. And it, it's an uncertain Western division. You know, a lot of folks feel like Jackson State's the, the best team on the East, but then you've got uncertainty with Dooley coming in, first-year coach, who's going to be the quarterback there, who's going to be the quarterback at Alcorn. you got a veteran quarterback and Perry at UAPB, um, Prairie View with a first-year head coach. You don't know how that system's going to look. So a wild, wild Western division, and we're just trying to get back to, to, to winning football and championship football. We'll, we'll see with a different roster and definitely a new quarterback. Man, forget all that. 
How about that field goal against Alcorn last year, man? I don't Phil- want to talk about it. I'm, I'm, I'm ready to hang up the telephone. It don't feel good when it's on the other side. Right, you know. No, it doesn't. It, it, it does not. It, it was, uh, you know, and, and you know, people still talk about that game because it was kind of a, a short kick that kind of set it up. And, you know, hey. You got to give Southern credit for finding a way to make it happen. I mean, all the pain that we administered over the years, that one was pretty painful because it looked like we had kind of stolen that one. Mm. But, uh, you know, the Jaguars snatched it right back from us. They got to give them credit. Y'all win all those games, all those years, and you want to sit here and whine about one little old game, man. Well, Feel my know, pain, winning, Charles. Feel winning's my contagious. pain. Winning's <laughs> contagious. And, you know, when, you, when you're when you used to being on the top of that mountain and then all of a sudden you got to come back down to civilization, yeah. it's a funny feeling. And so, you know, I think uh, – but look – you know, personally, that's that's kind of how I feel. But professionally speaking, mm-hmm. you know, we we had a good run, and you know, we had Southern's number. You know, two straight SWAC championship game appearances down at mm-hmm. down at All Corn, mm-hmm. and and we 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 got the heartbreak there mm-hmm. with with you guys. But I know that one <laughs> felt good on your end; it felt bad on our end. But I understand that you know things happen, sports happen, and sometimes those things do happen. But it don't feel good. I ain't gonna lie. That one. I just want to make sure y'all feeling it up there, all right? Yeah, I just wanna... oh, absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> People still talk about that, by the way. I'm like, how in the world did we lose that game? You know, and there were some opportunities there that we had offensively that we just couldn't couldn't get the ball in the end zone. We scored a ton of points, but we left a lot of stuff out there. And then that that last drive at the end, it's just it, it was debilitating and devastating Ooh, for a time. I like still those word for choices. A lot of people. Ooh, your diction is there today. I like your word choices. You know, <laughs> you look at you guys' season last year, and I think the, un, the the one of the untold stories a lot of people don't talk about as much is how much of of a road warrior you guys had to be last year. Only three home games, everything else outside of Lorman, and Mississippi. What was that like having to go on the road that much in one season? Um, it's it's, it's tough. You know, and of course, the reason why was because we didn't play a couple of springs ago, and you know we had to pay for that by playing a lot of those games on the road. Uh, you know, try to get caught up. It's it's not easy. You know, it's definitely not easy. No no question about that. Because you have a short turnaround time. You got to get over the games, and you got to have a short turnaround time. You know, the trip to the trip to Bethune was was obviously a tough one, but you know it was a good flight, a charter flight. It wasn't that bad. It's always a good trip to Baton Rouge, and you know we got to go back to Valley this year. We went up there last year, uh, so I mean we have some short trips. You know we always have a trip to Houston. That's uh, a six-hour, you know, six-hour bus ride. So it, I mean, anytime you're playing on the road is tough, but when you have so many road games in one football season, it, it really, really is tough because you, you got to get focused because it's never easy to win on the road in this conference, as as you guys know. And we have had so many road games, you know, last year, and it was it was tough. We battled through it, but uh, but hey, this is this is a swack. And in the road, or on the road, it's never never easy. You know, a question I want to ask about Coach Fred McNair. He is a guy that I respect a lot. I, I like his poise and his presence on the sideline, uh, no matter what. And I think one of the games last year that you guys had on the road that I really enjoy watching him coach was against Pine Bluff when you guys battled back in that second half to ultimately win that game. But one hell of a comeback. You know, I look at him. What keeps him going with that calm, cool demeanor in order to keep this program? Um, and, and I use program, not this team, but this program uh, going the way that he does. Of course, we know Jay Hopkins came in and, and then Coach Manette took over once uh, Coach Hopkins went over to Southern Miss. But to keep this thing going and, and, and keep it afloat, uh, what is it about him and, and doing it, as I call, the all corn way? Well, I mean, he just has the poise. I mean, I think that's that's the one thing about him. You know, he doesn't get rattled. You know, I was talking to him yesterday, the first day of camp. I'm like, Coach, you ready to get it going? Yeah. I mean, it's just – but I think this past season was – the belly was in his – you know, the fire was in his belly a little bit because of what happened last year. So he, he's, he's got a little more grit to him. But for the most part, you know, he's got a lot of good coaches around him to do a lot of the heavy lifting and all he has to do is just, just coach. And I think that's that's very important. And, and I've known Coach McNair even you know prior to him coming coming back as a quarterbacks coach when he was you know coaching at the at, at the lower levels. And he, he never was that kind of guy, that rah rah guy. He was always calm, cool, had that that calm demeanor. So, but I think that in in, in essence reflects on his team. I mean, you you guys know 
you know, players are a reflection of their coach. So coach doesn't get rattled, uh, you know, doesn't doesn't get outside himself, and and the team doesn't do that either. And I think that's just a that's just a reflection of who he is. He's always been that way, and I don't I don't expect that to change at at, at this point. Even though I I do believe the fire is in his belly because <laughs> last year wasn't a good year, and he doesn't want to experience that feeling again. And the fact that all corners pick behind Southern to win the West, like you know. I think that also has to be there too. That that Southern Alcorn game in Baton Rouge uh, in October, I cannot wait to see uh, what that game is going to be like. Uh, with your quarterbacks, you talk about the quarterback battle. One thing I do like about Alcorn, you guys know how to find dual threat quarterbacks that step up to the plate. Uh, all of them have been swack offensive uh, MVPs and. I like the consistency of where when one man goes down, the next man comes up. When you look at these quarterbacks that's there now, are these guys dual threats, or does it look like you're starting to move more to what we saw with Felix Harper, more of the passing, uh, more dominant in the passing game, prominent in the passing game? Well, when you look at that position, Aaron Allen, the Louisiana Tech transfer, and I talked to our offensive coordinator, um, Elliot Radden, for about an hour and a half last month prior to camp. And, and Aaron Allen, a tech transfer, I saw some film on him. He's more of the pocket passer. Um, if, if you just look at his film, you know, he stands in that pocket and he's going to push the ball down the field. The other three quarterbacks that we have, Markavian Quinn, who most likely will be the number two, is more of a dual threat quarterback. So if, if we just play this thing out, and it's still early, just the first day of camp completed yesterday, if if you started the season today, it'll probably be Aaron Allen, and he's more the pocket passer. And just even watching him yesterday in the seven on sevens and eleven on elevens, he just stands in the pocket and makes those plays develop. And the receiver's got to get open, and you know he can move around a little bit, but that's not his thing. But we know the Braves in the past with John Gibbs and Felix Harper and Noah Johnson, Lenore Slickman can move the pocket. Aaron Allen isn't quite that guy. So there has to be some adjustments made by both quarterback and offensive line to be able to block a little bit longer. And I think that's going to be something to watch out for in camp. You know, something else I've noticed as well is once you guys got Felix Harper, uh, Alcorn State at one time, could nobody in this conference run the ball like Alcorn State? Of course, Southern snuck up and started running the ball uh, and, and got pretty good at it. But you look at because you had such a, a good guy that was able to pass the ball in Felix Harper, it seems Alcorn went away from that dominant run game. Uh, what does that Alcorn running back room look like? And then how does that change the dynamic of Alcorn's uh, previous dominant run game now that you got a guy that can potentially stand in the pocket for you? Well, I think because of the fact that you've got a new guy that's going to be – Calling the plays, I think running the football this year is going to be even more of a paramount than it's been in the past. You knew what you had with Felix Harper. You knew what you had with Lenoris Footman. You knew what you had with Noah Johnson. All of those guys are kind of dual threat. So you can kind of balance the scales a little bit and not pressure to run the football quite as much, even though the Braves are run first team, always have been and always will be. But this year is a little bit different because you don't know how long it will take for that quarterback position to develop the continuity there. So you look at the Braves' running back room, you got a kid from Syracuse who got his MBA degree, named uh, Dervian Howard. Kid from a Syracuse transfers, got Mississippi connections, and this guy's a stud. First one out on the field, last one to lead, getting his reps, had a terrific spring, and he's going to be a beast in the backfield. I mean, he wowed everyone in the spring game. And he's going to be one of the big backs. But you've got coming back, Nico Duffy, scat back, small guy, quick, can get out on the perimeter. He's going to, with those two, Howard and Duffy will be a pretty good one-two punch. And then you've got another guy, kid, Javante Leatherwood, who saw some action last year. So those are the top three running backs that we'll have. You know, the reason why the Braves were, have been successful, I think we all know this, is because they have been able to run the football. And the one thing that always confuses me when I look at SWAC football teams, you know, always say they want to run the football, but don't stay committed to it. Yep. You know, when it, when it doesn't work, they get away from it. The Braves still pound the rock, even though there are some games in which it's been tough sledding. But that's what they do. You know, all you need is three yards, four yards on first down, and then you can kind of work it from there. But I've seen SWAC teams get away from it, and it costs them. And for the Braves, they always have been a team that sticks with the run. 
They've been successful with it. You know, if you go back several years, one of the best backs ever to come through here, Arnold Walker with that touchdown in overtime to, to win down in Baton Rouge, we just stick with the running game. We're going to continue that. But this year, more than probably any other year within the last seven or eight years, we're going to have to run the football because you don't know how long it will take the continuity to come around with Aaron Allen, Quinn, Lawrence, or Williams, at quarterback. You just don't know. So, therefore, you have to be able to run the football. You know, we got about six minutes before we go to break, and I'm going to ask you about the defensive side of the ball. Uh, Alcorn, we have seen, has uh, typically a good size at defensive line and good linebacker play. Uh, but you guys have lost some pieces uh, in those two key areas. Uh, and, and normally they do such a good job of putting pressure on quarterbacks from the D-line and, and linebackers holding it down to where you really didn't get a chance to see much of Alcorn's defensive backs. But defensively, what is Alcorn looking like? We've got uh, one of the guys that, that was at Media Day, K.J. Kinsler. They call him Hitman. Um, he, he's a guy that, that has been, the last couple of years, really been special back on that back end of the defense. The defense is going to be a big story because that whole staff has been remade. Cedric Thomas, who was uh, the defensive coordinator previously at Alcorn, left to become an assistant coach at USM when Jay Hobson left to go to USM. Uh, was the head coach at UAPB for a short period of time. Is back as defensive coordinator. You have a whole new defensive staff. So uh, he was hired early in the process to where he can get his defense, you know, in place. But that's still going to be, you know, kind of a question mark in terms of how he likes to do things. I think if you look at the players and the talent that's there, the back end will probably be the the stalwart of our defense. We've got to get up front. We've got to get a little bit better there and in the middle part of our our defense. But our back end, our secondary, is going to have the most experience, and I think that's going to be the key, <clears throat> as well as Cedric Thomas, you know, getting his defense and the attitude. I mean, he is a loud, boisterous coach. He's the loudest coach on the field, and he wants you to bring it every single day at practice. He doesn't want a lot of loafing around. And, you know, he's got a lot of good life stories to share, and he just wants you to be focused defensively. And it's something a little he's, he's kind of in the same mold as our previous defensive coordinator, Cedric Thornton, who's now at Grambling. You know, just shares more life stories and football stories, but the intensity, the passion, the energy is there. And they're going to have to bring that every play because that's how Cedric Thomas is. Question I got to ask, you know, Alcorn, I know for one, is a tough place to go play. It was uh, ranked as the, the toughest stadium in the conference. Where do those people come from? On the way there, I don't see nothing. Where do they come from, Charles? What, what, <laughs> where, when it's game day, where do they just pop out from? <laughs> oh, they come from all around. They come from Jackson. They come from the Delta. And, of course, you know, Natchez and Vicksburg, 45 minutes, 40 minutes up the road. They come got from some folks Rouge. coming from Meridian, and Baton Rouge, New Orleans. They come they from come. Baton Rouge. It's a bunch of all-corn nights laying low in Baton Rouge. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep, that is definitely the case. So, it's you know, we have a great game day atmosphere. And, uh, you know, we're, if people are looking forward to, to the home season, you know, we open up with the number 10th ranked team in the FCS. And, uh, you know, we've got Jackson State coming in on the back end, Bethune Cookman coming in on the back end. So, I mean, fans love all corn football. They love, they love the campus. They love how you can spread out and just, you know, we got a new RV park that's been sold out since it's open. I mean, so it's just, it's a great atmosphere, the lake, everything. And I think people just love the, love the atmosphere. Just, you know, you can just, let, you can let your hair down and no, just you have can't. a good time. No, you and can't. And then you add winning football to that formula. <laughs> and then it just, it just makes it a good day on campus. I do not like coming up there to Lorman, Mississippi, <laughs> man. I'm telling you. <laughs> hey. <laughs> well, now, I kind of think, you know, the same way when I come over the hump. You know, I shared this story last couple of years ago. We came up there. I was an hour and 10 minutes from the base of the hump till I found my parking spot. Hour, no, hour and 18 minutes. And I'm like, wow. At least you had cell great. phone service, okay? At least, huh? at least you had cell phone service. I get over there to Alcorn, don't call or text me because there's no cell phone. I can't post anything until I get halfway to Natchez. <laughs> I agree with you on that. It is, it is tough at times, but we are, we are definitely working on that. I appreciate sure. that. It's 2022. <laughs> All right. Man, I, I look, Charles, I enjoyed having you on. You know, we're going to do a little trash talking. It's Alcorn. It's Southern. It gets no better than that. Two teams that are picked – 
at the top of the SWAC West Southern pick number one, Alcorn pick number two, a close number two. That game in October here in Baton Rouge, I think is going to be one to circle on anybody's calendar if you're looking to find some good football. Coach Eric Dooley versus Coach Fred McNair. Charles, as always, man, you're more than welcome to come on, man. I enjoy the conversation, and we'll definitely have to get you back on and take a walk down memory lane and go through some of those stories that's back in the day as you've been around uh, a while to talk about all corn and the swag. So, man, I'd definitely love to have you back on sometime and be able to do that. Oh, man, I got, I got tons of stories. And just going back to the McNair days and, you know, when Charlie Ward and Mumford was packed and just you know, setting the record against Southern University. I mean, it's just it's story after story. We can talk all day about that stuff. So <laughs> I, I look forward to it. Well, well, I appreciate you coming on, man. We'll definitely have you on uh, here soon before the season gets started, man. Thank you, Charles. All right, appreciate you guys. All right. That was Charles Edmond right up the road up there in Lorman, Mississippi. Uh, appreciate uh, Charles coming on, man. Appreciate yeah, him coming sure. on. Up there at Alcorn. We got to get ready to take a break. It's the top of the hour. We come back. We get my guy Mark Gray on out there on the East Coast. You know he's going to bring a little East Coast flavor to the show. So you stay tuned. We'll be right back. It's the Jaguar Journal. <laughs> 